Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph, and I'm here to talk about everything that's happening in and around the city of Missoula, including MCAT news, as well as weather and other things, and more and other things. Pre-critic, um, Flagship Friday, um, yeah, there's just so much going on. <laughs> but I'm going to um, start things off by just giving uh, you guys a little tease that uh, uh, MCAT news, um, tomorrow, um, MCAT is hosting our Saturday animation. Uh, well, at the same time, Kid of Blue is going on at the University of Montana, and MCAT will be there as well. So we're going to be kind of stretched kind of thin uh, up and around here. But our Saturday drop-in animation uh, is happening from 1 to 5 p.m., and it's for only $10 per kid. And it gives the kids opportunity to do some, do some stop animation, make some movies, and use some videos using Final Cut Pro and Stop Motion Studio Pro. So if your kids like Legos and they want to do some Lego animation, we'll have that here as well. So you guys can enjoy that. Um, we also have a winter camp that's coming up. Um, we're looking for uh, kids between the ages of 9 and 13, just around the same age that we always have for our uh, Saturday drop-ins. Uh, we are doing winter days, and this has happened from December 27th through the 29th. It's from 9 to 3 p.m. Uh, they do. We do have some pre-care starting at 8 a.m. if people need to drop off their kids earlier. Um, but yeah, it's a great. It's gonna be a great day. Kids will make movies and um, stop motion and all sorts of wonderful things. And it's a, it's it's just a great opportunity to basically get your feet wet in the broadcasting field. And, you know, it's never too early to start, and it's a great way to be on camera, and I know a lot, a lot of kids like to be YouTube stars, and this is a good way to kind of learn the mechanics of how to make that happen. So that's kind of what's happening there with quick announcements. Uh, let's talk about some weather, and then I'm going to get into some new stuff. So uh, currently, it is 25 degrees outside. You have their high of 34 degrees. You have a low of 26 degrees. Um, Saturday, you're going to have that uh, high of 31 degrees. There is that winter advisory warning going on through the weekend. Um, I, I believe it will end probably early Saturday, but then of course Saturday night your low is going to be in 20 degrees. Um, yeah, for pretty much it's going to be pretty much stagnant. It's going to be jumping between 20 and 70 percent chances of snow and rain mixtures pretty much going on through the weekend up until Monday, where that rain will probably wash out any snow that has that that falls in the Missoula Valley area. So let's talk about some news things. Um, in the news, if you haven't heard already, uh, UM uh, came out with a study. Um, UM Fire Ecology Professor Philip uh, Hugura said, tomorrow's, uh, tomorrow's, as in future, forests across the Rocky Mountains won't look anything like they do today. Uh, with fire season after fire season engulfing much of the forest around Montana has resulted in data from nearly 1,500 states sites in five states, including Colorado, Wyoming, Washington, Idaho, and Montana. Along the way, they measured more than 63,000 seedlings growing in 52 areas burned by wildfire in the past three decades. That's basically 1,500 sites. And among those 1,500 sites, there's only 63 seedlings. Let me just talk about this a little bit. Most of these seedlings are not old enough to withstand fires like their parents endured in the past fire seasons, and there's more frequent fires happening, uh, uh, which is a tribute to global warming, according to the professor. Um, in the warmest, driest forests, uh, researchers found evidence suggesting that trees have actually stopped regenerating after wildfires, which wasn't the case in the past. The pattern was consistent across all sites reviewed in this study. The research team included scientists from the UM, the University of Idaho, the, Nat um, the Nature Conservatory, um, the University of Washington, University of Colorado, Colorado Boulder, uh, Tall Timbers Research Station and Land um, Con Conservancy, um, and the Washington, uh, Washington State Department of Natural Resources. Um, in the state, the Billings Gazette, China and Montana are working on forwarding an export of livestock to Asia. The to the Asian continent, continent. sorry about that, uh, plans are underway for Montana ranchers to ship $70 million worth of beef to China next year as part of a $300 million business deal, including a $100 million investment from China to a Montana packing plant. This is kind of uh, what what is happening, what happens across the state. On average, a rancher could sell his cattle for $1,000 out of state, uh, which would go to a meat packing plant. Uh, facility which they would fatten up the livestock and they would more than double the price of the cattle after they get the cattle sold to them um, so it, so then it would double the price to two thousand um, dollars so basically uh, ranchers here in Montana would lose out a thousand dollars just by selling it up uh, so under the agreement announced in November Montana ranchers will supply two hundred 
$1 million worth of Montana sourced beef to JD.com uh, beginning in January 2018 and continuing through 2020 as uh, at uh, a minimum. Um, that's basically kind of like the first negotiation. They went to China, s signed a mem memorandum of, of agreement. Um, JD is expected to buy 80,000 to 90,000 cattle. Um, uh, uh, Chinese investors will place additional $100 million in Montana feedlots and packing plants. So ranchers would sell their cattle to JD.com. Uh, JD.com is... Let me just quickly go to that website just to get, uh, give you guys a look of uh, their company through China. So this is JD.com. And um, from what I kind of looked at it throughout this area, it's a very Amazon.com type of situation and you, you know, where you can buy things on here as well. So that's the company that's going to be buying um, um, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of cattle through the state of Montana in the next two years. Um, so anyways, Chinese company JD will not um, ex uh, accept any cattle that have any implants, hormones, in return ranchers who deliver cattle for this agreement will be assured that the highest market price on the day that their cattle is sold. So that's uh, kind of what's going on with that. In uh, national news, a suit filed on behalf of Organization of Competitive Markets by Capitol Hill legal watchdog Democracy Forward charges U.S. Department of Agriculture Secretary Sonny Perdue and his agency with uh, arbitrary and capricious behavior in rolling back those two rules, one of which have made it easier for individual farmers uh, to sue for anti-competitive behavior. So the whole idea is that ranchers and people who sell uh, cattle, uh, pork and beef and all that stuff, they've gotten to situations where um, they're not able to uh, sell at full price for the most part and there's too many standards in the way to prevent them from selling their, uh, um, their the, the meat that they've had and there's a lot of issues when it comes to uh, um, companies basically who have their own um, source of meat um, basically kind of underselling themselves in a way. So many of the farmers affected by the rollback supported Donald Trump for president, believe in his promise to look after their interests, but now are delusioned, uh, delusioned in and the current um, uh, the, the current status of what it is today. So, of course, Thursday's lawsuit, which happened um, just the other day, was filed in an attempt to put legal muscle behind the frustrations of farmers and ranchers over a highly consolidated meatpacking system uh, of the law. Forty thousand contract poultry farmers, nine hundred thousand cattle ranchers, and seventy thousand hog farmers in America have given support to this. Uh, the rollback rules are known as GIPSA, short for Grain Inspection Packers and Stockyard Administration, the arm of the USDA tasked with promoting fair and competitive practice in the industry. Large meat packers are represented by um, a agribusiness lobby members such as the National Chicken Council, the National Pork Producer Council, and the National Cattle Beef so uh, Association countered that adopting the rules would have lowered the bar for farmers to sue meatpacking for anti-competitive behavior, invited frivolous and costly litigation, resulting in higher prices for customers. So that was some of their motivations for uh, having some of these rules into place, was to prevent higher prices on these meats as well. But in, U in the USDA, in response to the request for comment, issued a statement pointing out that it had based its decision on part of public comments, many of which have noted that the purpose of the Packers and Stockyards Act is to protect the competition, not individual competitors. The statement has also said that agents, uh, agency's action was consistent with President Trump's executive order to reduce regulations and control regulatory costs. USDA says it remains committed to protecting the fair trade practices in competitive markets. So that's kind of where uh, it's standing at. Uh, a lot of the ranchers are um, furious about some of the uh, competitive practices that uh, some of the meatpacking organizations have been doing and uh, USDA is in support of these com competitive companies that have been kind of um, from what the farmers have been saying have been I guess um, screwing them over. So that's kind of what's happening in, in and around um, the United States. Um, some of the things that are happening, there's a lot of meat basically to be talked about in terms of trading and selling and all that stuff. So um, let's talk, let's uh, wrap things up with that. And I got some uh, new programs I'm going to be airing on MCAT. And when we come back, I got some pre-critic where I'm going to prejudge movies, whether they need it or not. Don't worry.
There's a wide range of Irish American and other communities. There's no Friends of Irish Freedom or Clon Ale or any of them. It's just a whole load of friendship, if you like. And I think that's interesting as a starting point. Then John Devoy takes over a little bit. The, the, the Friends of Irish Freedom starts to support. And as Trelock said, three months later, and not even in, in March 1917, he says she's done more real good for the cause of Ireland than all the previous orators of the last 25 years. And he, in that article, he says, she must be received in all the towns around New England. And he lists off some of them. And she did. She went to Lowell, Lawrence, and Massachusetts, to Holyoke, and... and um, in, I think it's in Massachusetts as well, and all around New Hampshire, upstate New York, and all of that. So she toured all around and was hosted, and, and real sensation. She was in Chicago by February, and again spoke in the orchestra hall, and she's um, at this stage well launched. Um, one young man who seldom spoke in class uh, read a story. Um, I don't remember his name, I hardly knew him, but he told a story that has stayed with me for over two decades. He wrote about how he was commuting to class on the on a typical Tokyo subway one day where passengers were all minding their own business, as in this photograph that I took from the internet, occupied with books and newspapers and comics. You often see people, adults, reading comic books on Tokyo subways or looking at their electronic devices, essentially ignoring each other. When the train stopped at a particular station, a butterfly flew through the door into the car. And one particular passenger began using his newspaper to try ushering the butterfly back toward the door. As the train continued its journey to the next station, other passengers joined the butterfly rescue effort. By the time the train came to a stop again, many of the passengers were working together talking to each other to help the butterfly through the door. And when the butterfly had left the train, according to the student who reported it to our class, the passengers continued talking to each other. So if you have you know, four or five people uh, and they have various jobs within this illegal uh, formation, that, which that's what constitutes a conspiracy, uh, to distribute drugs, all of the drugs in the conspiracy, whether the first guy or gal in the in the chain is aware of how much how many drugs there are involved by the time the fifth person's involved they're all responsible for the total quantity of the drugs and then their offense level under the United States sentencing guidelines was driven by that quantity and then the judges and then so that would give you an offense level and then they just basically was a mathematical matrix that the judge would look at and depending on their criminal history category it assigned the number of months that person would have to do in prison and I can tell you that I saw more 20 to 25 year old Montana kids go to federal prison for in excess of five years 60 months it's always months in the federal system uh, during that time than I can count and I used to say you know if we want to deter kids from distributing drugs in our small town as we like to call Montana then and the federal government this is what this is supposed to be all about then why don't we have billboards all up and down I-90 that tell these kids do you realize you're going to go to prison and it's going to be mandated by the law and the judge isn't even going to be able to have anything to say about it and you're going to go to prison for five years or more. All right, so those are some of the new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT this weekend if you plan on staying indoors. But let's talk about some new movies that are coming out this week. We're kicking it off with, of course, that movie that everyone's been talking about, um, The Last Jedi. So let's, ta let's go to my notes. This movie is uh, dropping, and I all I can say is what kind of title uh, will the last of this trilogy actually be because this is called The Last Jedi. So the next movie has to be something related to the last last Skywalker, the last thing. I don't know. It's, it's super weird. But hey, uh, we're going to get more and more of these movies uh, forever. 
I mean, there's going to be a movie now, and then there's going to be a movie in May 2018. There's the Han Solo movie, and then there's going to be the other movie in 2019, about this time of the year. So about two years from now, there's going to have the third installment of the trilogy. And then now, apparently, um, the guy who directed this movie is going to be doing his whole entire trilogy of his own. Uh, but anyways, it picks up where Luke Skywalker and Rey met on the hilltop in the middle of the ocean. Remember that scene where he just takes off his hood and he's like... And then, yeah, that, that, that's basically it. There's a lot of things going on and more space battles and lightsaber battles than all, all you nerds out there. So enjoy. Up next, we got Ferdinand. Uh, follow an animated bull in the years full of animated movies that never really hit the mark for quality over quantity. With movies like Zootopia and Moana th that people are obsessed with, this kind of feels that though this year is kind of kind of a waste. But of course, not saying it's a bad thing because a lot of these movies don't have any memorable songs that uh, my niece and or nephew have been singing and driving me crazy. So I gotta say, good year for animation. So anyways, follow a bull named Ferdinand, which is also the title of this movie. Stereotype Spanish folk in this movie about misunderstandings and trying to find their place in this world. Beyond Reboot Cool. So follow a tough-as-nails cop in this Reboot Cool that follows a tough-as-nails cop tracking down his son when he's taken by aliens. That's right. Watch uh, another sci-fi film that launches on the same day as Star Wars. <laughs> Good luck with that, homie. Um, Beyond Skyline is an alien invasion movie that has aliens abduct people, and it's actually like a sequel be, it's a side cool because it happens about the same time as the original Skyline. So the movie's called Beyond Skyline. is an alien invasion movie that has aliens abduct people for their brains and use them to power machines. So the basic, I don't know, I don't really understand how it worked, but the whole idea is that they use human brains to as like computers for their like machines and stuff. And I was like, okay, whatever. It, it you know, it's sci-fi. They, they they just have to be like, oh, it's the uh, wiggle device. It's like. Heck yeah. And then long story short, fighty fighty punch punch. And of course, did I mention there was a tough as nails cop in it? All right, that pretty much concludes all your pre-critic needs. I have an amazing movie for you guys. It's called Demogarret. So without further ado, here is the newest flagship Friday video of the week. Hey, mm -mm -mm. what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? I don't know what you're doing. I put my feet up, you put your feet up. It's yeah. not fair. Do you have a problem? Yes, I have a problem. This is my table. I've been seeing a lot of people go missing. It's interesting. Your feet are on my table. I cannot accept it. Listen, I'm serious. This is an actual problem. I listen better at feet off table. Got out from under table, little boy. I'm hiding from the monster. Monster? Monster. <laughs> me, and my, me and my homies just hanging out. And then we were attacked by the monster. That's all that happened. I don't care about monster as long as you keep my feet off the table. As speaking of which, get feet off the table, little girl. I know how you are, Stan. I lost all my homies. You wouldn't understand. This is this is America. This is the land of the free, not the land of the table. You can't just own a table. It's different. I was just trying to be your homie. I'm sorry that friendship offends you. I feel like someone on my table. <sighs> he on my table. <gasps> There's no other table. This is my chance. 
Hey, get your feet off my table. Who said that? I did. Who? I did. Your, your carrots. Yeah. We gotta get out of here. Hey, stop manhandling me. It's not nice to manhandle. Well, how about with inside job, right? What is going on here? Oh, this right. monster behind us is turning us in. It's turning people into carrots. My homies! You. That was close. What are we gonna do? Hey, what are you doing? Don't put me in here. What are you doing? I'm putting you with my homies for safe keeping. <laughs> but they put feet on my table. But you don't have feet. You're a carrot. But you're racist. I got a tumor in my head. Now you are free! Hey guys, welcome back. Now it's time for some city council. Uh, that sponsor, <laughs> that video is sponsored by homies. Keep your homies close, people. Keep them close. All right, so kicking things off with your city council is some parks and conservation. Guess what, guys? Your fees are going up. So if you guys are planning on doing a party in a park, going maybe hosting a wedding at Moon Randa of Homestead, your fee is going to go up like a dollar. Maybe like six dollars for a couple of things for like a whole day thing. It's it's pretty uh pretty much down the line. They do this every single year. It's an annual thing. So anyways, um as the year ends, the master fee schedule is an annual annual review. This document is for is the foundation for fees associated with facility reservations, concession permit, special use permit, conservation land use permits, rentals, alcohol permits, and program fees. Because you can't just go to a park and have alcohol. That's illegal. You need a permit to do that. Anyways, so here's Shirley Kingsley um, talking about some of the uh, reasons behind the fee increase. And then the series of meetings um, the Parks and Recreation Board pass, uh, recommended passing the fees yesterday at their um, December meeting. Uh, this, this review, the, um, park, the County Park and Trail Committee will review the, the um, policies and fees associated with Fort Missoula and then the public hearing. All right, so the public hearing is still out there, so you can ch still check out that public hearing to say that you don't want them to increase all that stuff. But of course, as the growing number of parks and uses comes clear to the city of Missoula, the master fees that have uh, applied so much to the city parks will be updated um, and transformed to fit in its new park, the Fort Missoula Regional Park, especially, that would have its own fees and permit um, request process as well. Um, it's a new park, so they have to have new permits and schedules. Usually it's kind of like copy and paste with other parks and stuff like that. But since they have like a whole like uh, softball diamond, concession, concessions and all that stuff, and a whole new like um, non-grass turf field, um, it's going to be have to figure out new uh, fees and all that stuff to for people to use that for like tournaments and whatnot. So 
just uh, I'll keep you guys updated on that later on as well. But that's kind of like the the shortening it. It's it's a long meaning, and they're just talking about basically the brass tacks of how much more every little individual thing is going to cost. So I don't want to go through that whole thing. So uh, you guys can go through that by going on to the city of Missoula's website. So let's move on to another community meeting through land use and planning. So the city of Missoula and university areas are writing a space and bulk ordinance like, uh, to, they're not, they're not trying to make an ordinance, they're trying to do, do a zoning to preserve historic buildings, size and patterns in the University Historic District as described and attached University Neighborhood Competitive Standards document. The amendments would allow for a mindful growth and change in positive influence housing size and uh, proportionally relative to lot sizes while not disincentivizing throughout a thoughtful development in this university district neighborhood. So they're basically trying to say is like, hey guys, like if you're gonna build a house in this neighborhood, let's not go, let's not get too crazy with it. You're, you're you know, it's not gonna be a, a, a crazy painting architecture type thing, but so basically what began in the winter of 2006 from concerned neighbors, which was a result of changing character of the neighborhood, like homes that are way too large and tasteless, according to some concerns of, the, concerns of the, some of these citizens, this, would be an, uh, this wouldn't be an ordinance, but a zoning deal. Over 100 people were in favor of this in the neighborhood, and 15 were not in this area of concern. Tom Zavitz, Development Services, talks about the last um, major change and what they learned from this. The original zoning district, if you faced your house on this street side, you had to have a 20-foot setback here. So that was a big change that occurred, oh, I, 40 or 50 years ago. So what we did was we said, okay, let's go back to 15 feet instead of the 10 on the street side, increase that to 15, which gets us closer to the original zoning district and character, and then reduce the height at 15 feet to 25 and then at 20 feet which would be back here somewhere they can go to the current height limit and we wouldn't be reducing the height limit across the board like we had the last time we were in here so that were the sort of concessions compromise that Glenn made with the architects and um, this is what resulted which was a little bit of an increase on the street side to the building envelope so you can see currently this is the building envelope that a person could build in and, and the buildings have tended to start to completely fill that envelope, not in character with the neighborhood. So all right, so that is kind of like the kind of like the rundown of some of the things, just like a graphic and everything what they're talking about. But here's Gwen Jones who kind of elaborates a little bit more on this as well. At this point, we've spent a lot of time working, incorporating his changes. I think it's actually a really good product at this point, and I see a lot of potential for possibly applying it in other areas of town. We're going to be talking about affordable housing density in Phil, and you know, we, we can build a lot of tenement housing like they have in the Soviet Union back in the 80s. That's, that's very dense in Phil. Or we're going to try and make a beautiful built environment that people like living in, and that means maintaining some negative space. So I think the discussions we're having in the U District, this is where it's generating from, but this is going to apply citywide. We're going to have to figure out how to do that. So this is a valuable discussion to be having, and this sense of space as you are in a neighborhood, breathing space, negative space, is a very important thing. Um, All right, so that was Gwen Jones on her response to what they're talking about in this particular meeting. So uh, here is a public comment from some one of the uh, neighborhood uh, m members uh, who basically talks about the oversized home near Bonner Park. You know the one. Two years ago, you were all aware of just such a house being built by Bonner Park. In fact, it was this house which precipitated the, the reaction that brings us here today. As you may remember from my letter earlier this summer, which I'm sure you've all received and most have, of you have read, the construction of this house not only caused significant dissension within our neighborhood, it palpably damaged two neighbors immediately to its west. The first of these, having, and after having invested significantly in his house to accommodate his family, 
was compelled to move because of the oppressive presence of his new neighbor's dwelling. The next neighbors to the west were at the same time forced into a defensive purchase which they had not planned for of half the vacated property as a buffer from the new house. The other half was bought by the new neighbor and the house was removed from the property. We in the university area contacted our ward representatives in January 2016 with Gwen as our primary contact. Since then, we have been through a long process, including neighborhood council and online survey conducted by city development and planning, three meetings with Gwen and Tom Zavitz, and yet another survey distributed by the university area homeowners. Feedback overwhelmingly supported a zoning remedy that would prevent new massive houses from destroying their neighbors' enjoyment of their property. All right, so that was, once again, that was um, John uh, Snively. Um, of course, there is uh, basically little I issues uh, on background on the, um, from the owner, homeowner's perspective. Um, Michelle Cares, uh, of course, does not support this zoning deal because she, in her own way, doesn't believe that um, the, um, the university neighborhood should uh, dictate how other neighborhoods grow and are created. The house across, from the, across the street from Bonner Park is about as many feet long as the one to the south out of the Snively's um, and is about as many feet tall as many of the fraternity and sorority houses that are the gems of, these, of this neighborhood. <clears throat> I realize that in combination, this is a lot to take, but impacts from nearby private property owners after significant investment in your own home is simply a part of public life. I have concerns with telling private property owners what they can and cannot do with their property. <clears throat> when it, you know, other than community safety, and I don't think that this reaches that, and the design and placement of a home on their property. I do not support standards at the neighborhood level and do not believe that this should be a, used as a template for other neighborhoods. <clears throat> I believe that the idea of um, loss of housing units is being used simply because it is compelling and may garner votes. I don't believe that the phenomena of raising two homes to save one is so widespread that it requires su such action in one neighborhood. As I mentioned in October, my ward contains two of the densest neighborhoods in our entire town, and our increasing density is one of a few that is the primary, although not the only, recipient of the impacts of our current growth policy and is working or being worked upon to provide the housing that our community needs. Lastly, I hope that you would reread the Missoula Organization of Realtors letter from October. I believed and agreed with it then, and I do now as well. Thanks. All right, so that was Michelle Cares in disagreement to this zoning. Um, Brian von Larsberg uh, thinks that this is a conversation that has to happen um, for any kind of future growth that Missoula will have, especially in these neighborhoods. I, I, I wonder if this isn't an opportunity, though, to develop some of the language and, and policy that other areas could use. And I guess I point that out because it, it doesn't feel right to me. I think we're premature in where we are with it right now, uh, given some of the con comments. And I'd like a little more time, frankly, to digest Mr. MacArthur's most recent comment that was posted, as well as Mr. Snively's comments. Um, but it also doesn't feel right to, to, to end this, I, I feel like. Um, I'll leave it at that. All right. So whether you uh, agree with uh, new zonings to prevent uh, certain tasteless houses from being built according to certain neighbors, um, or you want to have your neighborhood to represent uh, a kind of an ideal aesthetic that would also help drive property value up a little bit because nobody uh, feels more disenchanted when your neighbor's uh, house is worth more than yours. Just, you know, that's just a... Uh, this just a word of uh, that's just 
you know, just just think about it. All right. So if you want more information on that and the commu their open communication and the full meeting, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. Such a wonderful website to know everything that what's happening in your city of Missoula, upcoming events, upcoming um, city council meetings. Uh, you can check that all out by logging on to ci.missoula.mt.us. Now we're going to switch gears and we're going to talk about some... Actually, I want to show an art clip. Sorry, I just want to, I mean, because I have so many art clips to show you guys, I want to be able to show you as many as I can. So um, we'll, we'll kick things off with uh, the, the Zach, um, and this will end on December 22nd. So here is from the Zootown Arts Community Center um, art installation. <laughs> And if you get, in case you missed it, uh, our very own Rick Felix uh, made a cameo in that little art installation as well. Um, here are some of the things that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. So, batting down the hatches, it's time to read dot 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 more year-long reading challenge at the Missoula Public Library. Um, be sure to bring your uh, completed reading journal or log to the reference desk between December 15th and the 30th for staff verification. The fabulous prize will be awarded to all successful participants in early 2018. The 2018 reading list and journals will be available starting January 3rd. So this is the end of 2017 annual year-long read and they have a list of books that they have you required to read and they give you a reward for doing it. Um, and that's happening that's basically kicking off today and going on so you have until December 30th if you want to read all the books uh, that were in December uh, 2017. You can probably read it within 15 days. I believe in you. Um, Mismo and Misa, or as I like to call it, Mizzou Indoor Sports Arena, are doing some indoor fun and indoor tumbles and trampolines and foam pits, all that stuff, starting as early as 9.30 a.m. and going until about noon, and they're for young kids. Uh, Southgate Mall Community Coats for Salvation Army, December until t the 24th. Um, donate uh, your uh, old coat that you never wear anymore to the Salvation Army, and they give it to people, and they refurbish it through Missoula Textiles. Holiday performances. If you are a performer and you want to perform at the the mall, you can contact them by going to the Southgate Mall. Um, and, of course, the Ronald McDonald House presents the gingerbread competition as well. So check all that out. It's going to be going on all the way through the holidays inside Southgate Mall. Tiny Tales and Special Story Time at Missoula Public Library starting at 10.30 a.m. If you're interested in getting your kid reading and exposed to books and um, basically trying to get your kids to learn to read and le learn some new words every single day. Tiny Tales and Special Storytime at Missoula Public Library starts at 10.30 a.m. And if you stick around long enough, you can do some watercolor and yarns at Missoula Public Library starting at noon. Um, it's a great way to either choose between doing some watercolor or you can do some yarn. Learn to make your clothes. Uh, Cribbage and Bridge starts at 12.30. Um, 12.30-ish, um, you could play cribbage or bridge, um, and this is going to be at the Missoula Senior Center. Uh, it's across from um, Sweet Peaks. Um, Sweet Peaks. Big Dipper. Sorry about that. It's Big Dipper. Big, Dirker ice cre Big Dipper ice cream of, off of 5th uh, Street. Yep. <laughs> 
Teen Writers Group is going to be at the Missoula Public Library starting at 3.30 p.m. after school. Improve your writing skills if you're a teen because uh, transitioning into high school can be very difficult and writing and grammar seems to be the hardest thing to any of the youth, including myself, um, in these days of new uh, internet and all sorts of things. So it's a great way to improve your writing skills. So do that, and especially if you want to be a famous blogger when you get older. Uh, <laughs> Predator Feeding is starting at 4 p.m. Mizzou Insectarium. Um, Mizzou Butterfly House, uh, dot org is the organization that hosts um, the, at the Mizzou Insectarium. And they get to show you all sorts of um, feedings and all sorts of hungry uh, predators there. And you get to do some, touch some bugs and you get experience and checking out all sorts of wonderful um, bugs and stuff. So, and if you, uh, once you're done there, you can go to Family Friendly Friday at uh, Top Hat Lounge. It is a great way to just kick back while your kids are running around and be cray cray. And you can drink and be cray cray from 6 to 9 p.m. with drink specials. The Nutcracker is going to be at the Garden City Ballet. Um, it's happening pretty much all weekend long. University of Montana hosts the uh, local holiday tradition for over 30 years. Garden City Ballet celebrates 33rd season of the Nutcracker, featuring over 100 local performers. This is a truly a community event as they welcome dancers from all studios, Ballet Arts Academies, Downtown Dance Collective, on, uh, on Center Performing Arts, Rocky Mountain Ballet Theater, um, blah, 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 all this sorts of stuff. So it's a full of holiday joy, fantasy, and action with a blend of um, ter Taranovsky's um, music. Yeah, I know. I was like, I was looking, I was like, how do you? Taranovsky, boom, uh, music. And Irresistible Ballet, The Nutcracker, um, is a classic enjoyed by generations of young and old alike. And of course, I have never gone to this show at all, like in Missoula, like at all. I've, I've lived in Missoula my whole life, and I'm not 33, but I haven't been since I was born. So that may be something I may need, I may need to check out. So um, if you're not interested in doing that, um, you, you might miss that for GLOW. Um, so at St. Anthony Church is doing uh, the Missoula Community Chorus with Artistic Director Ron Wilcott presents the annual winter concert with a special appearance by Seeley, Seeley a uh, special appearance in Sealy as part of the Two Valley Stage Performing Arts Series. Glow featured a diverse mix of choral music uh, featuring two choral uh, master works by Bach, Val Viv Vivaldi, mm, and the 80 voice main choir. The 80 voice main choir and the smaller chamber ensemble will be augmented by small string and wind ensemble for selections throughout the program. You can check that out. It's going to be at St. Anthony Church at 7:30 p.m. And of course, if you're not if you, if you ha are, are not are, are doing any if you're not doing anything tonight, you should check out my play. I'm in a play. It's a Christmas Carol the Musical, and it's at 7:30 p.m. tonight along with uh, two performances on Saturday and Sunday. So five more performances for me. So um, check it out. It's going to be great. And if you're interested in going out and about later on tonight as well, here are some of your late night events for some of you late night uh, uh, um, uh, yokels, yoohoos, um, Nashville 406 going to be at Sunrise Saloon. Tom, the Tom Cats is going to be at the Union Club. Uh, karaoke is going to be at the VFW, and Charlie Parr will be at the Top at Lounge tonight, doing some blues music. They have salsa dancing with um, at the Dark Horse Bar. Uh, if you're not too interested in doing some country music, but there's basically two bars in one building, so Dark Horse, Sunrise Saloon, country or salsa dancing, you get your choice. So that basically concludes, concludes everything that's happening Friday night. Here is an art clip from the Clay Studios holiday um, special.
Welcome back, guys. I want to thank Rick Phillips for all those art clips. There's a, two new art installations happening at the Clay Studio in the Zach. I suggest you check it out. I'll try to show this one last art installation from the Mizzou Art Museum, which will be ending on December 30th. So I will uh, jump into that a little bit later. Uh, let's talk about some things that are happening for your... Um, events for your Saturday. Uh, Missoula Christmas Bird Count is kicking things off in the Missoula area. F the Five Valley Audubon Society will hold the uh, Missoula Christmas Bird Count, CBC, on Saturday, December 16th, tomorrow morning. Last year, the Missoula had 79 participants that helped identify 83 different bird species. The Missoula CBC is a part of the Audubon's 118th Christmas Bird Count, which is the na nation's longest running citizen science bird project, and the data collected helps Audubon science through the, throughout the year. Um, if you would like to be a part of this, you can call them, you can call Larry Weeks at 549 5632. Um, you can call uh, that, that, that number again, Larry Weeks, is going to be 549 Five six three two, um, or you can log on to moc. G at wow. Never mind. That's a long. That's a really long internet thing. So, um, Larry provide different options for you to choose from. Um, someone told me that there were twenty forty. They that they there were also just on a side note. Somebody told me that they saw forty ducks near low school the other day. So, maybe some of this weather will help ground some of the uh, birds that would be flying through here for uh, the season. So check it out. There's a lot going on. So Zootown Classic Basketball Tournament starts th this weekend. It's a, a basically a weekly thing. So every single Saturday this this week uh, th for this month, uh, starting at 8 a.m., um, it's a full a fun day of basketball, and they're looking for uh, people who are between um, second and third grade to eighth graders. So uh, let me just do the math in my head. I believe that this is somewhere between eight eight year olds and 13 year olds. So. Check that out. Um, Missoula Valley Winter Market is happening inside the Missoula Senior Center, and this is from November 11th until April 21st. So there's a lot going on here. So th they're excluding February 24th um, for some reason. So uh, there's uh, products from fruits, vegetable, vegetables, fresh bre uh, breads, pastries. So if you have your farmer's market uh, fixed needs, m the Missoula Valley Winter Market is the place to go, and it starts at 9 a.m. and it goes until about 1 p.m. at the Missoula Senior Center. Um, financial education class, Homeward. Homeward is a great place for people who or renting or wanting to buy a home to basically get some financial fitness and to basically be told is like okay how much do you make is like okay you're you're able to do this but you you shouldn't try to do this because then you'd be kind of straining your budget so that's kind of what they're going to do and they have a financial education class at homeward starting at 9 a.m it's completely free and you can register online at homeward.org or you can call them at 532-4663 um extension um no never mind that's not, there's no extension. No extension 10. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so check that out. The number again is 532-4663, extension number 10. And I'm assuming they'll probably give you options as well. Um, Hip Hop Holiday Market is going to be at Lowell Elementary School starting at 10 a.m. There's a lot of markets happening, so you, got, you get your crafts on because it's coming up to the holiday season. It's a great way to get some gift baskets for the holiday season. I know I use holiday season twice in the same time, but it's a great thing doing. They're doing some live music, prize drawings, and a mouth-watering bake sale, which uh, tremendously helps support Lowell School. Starting in downtown Missoula, uh, pretty much every single Saturday, um, carriage rides, free carriage rides, is going to be is provided by the Paws Resort at Paws Up Ranch, and this is uh, basically happening from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Check it out, and they usually pick up people at Pine Street, and they go back and around Pine Street in carriage rides. Yay! If you want, hey, if you like carriage rides, perfect. Perfect. But of course, Winter Mercantile is going to be at Western Cider, which is at 501 North California Street, Montana. Um, come get your holiday shopping done at Western Cider's West, uh, Winter Mercantile. They will be featuring some of Mon Missoula's hardest working designers and artists selling jewelry, clothes, leatherwork, and more uh, over the course of two days. And it's happening November 25th and December 16th, noon to 6 p.m. This indoor pop up shop is the best spot to find. Uh, curated selections of well-made goods. 
Um, Winter Fair is going to be at the Missoula Fairgrounds, so there's a lot of stuff happening just in the morning for your Saturday. Ice rink events, strolling uh, carolers, handmade and vintage market, free cocoa and coffee, fall fiend, and more activities will run indoors and outside from 1 to 6 p.m. and it's provided by many nonprofit organizations who will welcome your donations to their cause. Missoula Food Bank, Salvation Army, Toys for Tots, United Way, Brain Injury Alliance of Montana, Girl Scouts, Ronald McDonald House, and Mended Little Hearts are all being benefited by the Winter Fair and are hosting it. Uh, the next Cracker is doing a 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. performance at Garden City Ballet at the University of Montana. It's a local holiday tradition for over 30 years. I already said it. I already kind of give you a description of it for tonight as well. So you can do that either tonight. And in case you miss it, you can always check it out tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow night. Ugly Sweater Skate. Glacier Ice Rink is hosting Ugly Sweater, sweater Night. If you bring a, uh, an, ugly uh, an ugly sweater to skate on Saturday from December 16th from 5.30 to 8 p.m., all skaters who wear holiday sweaters will receive a free hot chocolate coupon, and the wearers of the ugly sweater will win free skating passes or other fr pr prizes. Admission is $6 for adults, $4 for a youth and senior. Skate rentals are $3. And, of course, once again, you can go to Christmas Carol, the musical. And that pretty much does it. If you want more information about all the events that are kicking off here in the city of Missoula, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. It is a wonderful website for anybody who wants to just go check out everything and anything that is Missoula related. Um, but I do want to show one more art clip before I start wrapping up the show. So here is an art clip from our very own Rick Phillips, and it's from the Missoula Art Museum. All right, guys, I want to uh, thank you guys for joining me this morning. There, there was a lot going on here, a lot of news, a lot of things happening with the ranchers and the beef industry. Um, there's just uh, it, including like uh, housing standards here in the city of Missoula, especially in the university area. Um, you can check out all the information by going on to ci.missoula.mt.us. If you can't um, access any of these programs on this website, MCAT puts it on our website as well. So any of the government and city uh, information, you can go to channel 190, and that's our civic channel that uh, talks about civil civic engagement here within the city of Missoula. You just go to this um, link right here, and it takes you to a wonderful page where it shows you the most updated meetings and more. And you go to channel 189 to find out more of your information about upcoming programs as well as going to How Do I. Um, we do our winter camp. You can register for a winter camp by going on to this link right here or clicking on this um, um, link on the uh, picture itself. It brings you to the sign so you can sign up your kid to our Winter Days Camp, but also you could uh, request an event recording. MCAT, uh, from what you've seen, some of our programs on our channel, um, you can request uh, programs to be filmed f of any upcoming events, causes, or rallies. MCAT will film it, and if you uh, pay a certain fee, we'll be able to live stream it in a professional way. So it, it usually the payment is usually fairly reasonable because it helps us offset the charges that we'd use to uh, be able to live stream in the first space. So that's why we charge. But most of the time we offer nonprofit organizations 12 hours free of our own services to create videos along the way. So you can go to our website, MCAT.org, for more information. If you want more information about Wake Up Missoula and all the wonderful videos that I've shown you today, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com. 
slash wake up Missoula. So nice to made you write out twice. Be sure to like me on Facebook, uh, follow me on Twitter, and of course subscribe to me on my YouTube because I have a nice little playlist of all the flagship variety videos of the week. I got dubbing stuff. I got so many wonderful videos from all sorts of different things. You can check all that out by going to many different websites. All you got to do is Google wake up Missoula and you'll find me. So thank you for guys for joining me this morning. Um, it's been, yeah, it's been real. Uh, I'll, I'll have next week. I'll be back next week, and then I'm going to be taking a week, uh, the week off of our winter camps from the 27th through the 29th. So um, I still have one more week left. So stay with me. Um, and for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. Mm -hmm.